everyone, Miss Art here to give you my Naruto chapter 641 review. Uh, this week's chapter is entitled The Main Attraction. Gee, I wonder who that is. <laughs> when I first read this title, I was immediately thought of like a circus. And that's pretty much what this whole chapter is, is one big circus act. <laughs> But let's let's start from the beginning, shall we? We rejoin Minato and friends as the sticky biju bomb type thing that Juvito or Gabito, whatever you want to call him, uh, has managed to place where Minato's arm used to be. We watch as it begins to glow very brightly, which precedes its expansion and the destruction of the area around it. And Minato quickly realizes that the only way he's going to be able to save his son and Sasuke is by, you know, fly, the flying thunder god techniquing it away from them, shushing it away, uh, and thus sparing his son and Sasuke. But as Minato is coming up with this plan, we see that Sasuke is also stepping up to the plate and is actually wrapping his Suzano around himself and Naruto. Oh my. I know the Naruto Sasu fans are happy about that one. But moving on, we see a hand suddenly appear atop of the glowing orb of destruction. And who should it belong to? Nobody else but Toriyama. And it's about time that he made it his reappearance. Uh, it's been plenty of time for him to, his body to reconstruct itself. And so we see he has come to save the day. He appears, he touches the orb, he disappears, he reappears behind Obito and basically says bananagram and leaves Obito with the exploding ball, the expanding ball, I should say. As we see the Biju Bomb's destructive radius envelop Obito at a distance, we see Toby Rama return to Minato and friends to announce that was actually a clone of his that delivered the goods. Toby Rama also reveals that the reason he was able to shushin over to Obito was because he managed to place a seal on him, much in the way that Minato uses seals to activate the Flying Thunder God technique. And of course, this makes perfect sense because Minato learned the Flying Thunder God technique from Tobirama, but this just goes to confirm that Tobirama did indeed use seals. And it is fun to note the difference in the seal style from Tobirama and Minato. But of course, the similarities between his dad's jutsu and Tobirama's jutsu is not lost on Naruto, and he and Tobirama have a pretty funny exchange. I'll read you Manga Stream's translation of this uh, <laughs> encounter. Naruto says, Badass, you can copy my old man's techniques. Not too shabby, old dude who looks like the second Hokage. <laughs> I just love that. And of course, Tobirama has a very blunt response. And he's saying, of course, you know, it was Yondaime Hokage who copied my techniques, and please, can you refer to me in a more respectful manner? But to me, it looks like Toby Ramos just put out that somebody called him old. My hair's naturally white. The scene switches to our favorite bromancers, Hashirama and Madada, and we see that Hashirama is getting very frustrated that Madada is standing in his way. And curiously, Madada responds that he too does not have time for this, but he has no other options left. And to this, I just say BS. Come on, Madada, nobody is being fooled that you're not excited that you're fighting with Hashirama. Have you forgotten your crazy boner face? Hashirama, oh my god, I said Hashirama. Oh, but now that I'm fighting him, suddenly I don't have time. Yeah, nobody believes that, Madara. Nobody believes that. I do like how there's a bunch of like juvie creatures just being like blown to the side as Madara is going into his perfect Suzano, and we see uh, Hashirama using like his uh, wood. Not using his wood, but using that wood creature whose name I have forgotten. But basically, it's what we've seen from their past fight. And clearly, the point of this fight is to give Obito more time to gain control of himself. But moving on, the scene switches to the Alliance, uh, who basically all they can do is gawk in awe and fear 
at Hashirama and Madara going at it. And they're not even going at it, truly. They're just kind of trading blows. But it is discouraging when they are so powerful and the rest of the army is so pathetic. And they're, you know, it's just completely obliterating morale within the remaining troops. But here comes Shikamaru. Good old Shikamaru steps up and basically what he says, I mean, this takes about like a page and a half. I think that's it. Maybe two pages. Uh, we see Shikamaru speaking through Ino's mind ability. He's still connected to everybody in the Alliance. And he gives them a pep talk that even though our power is not on the same level as our predecessor's power, that doesn't mean we still can't do something. And to me, this is Kishimoto setting up an important plot point. At some point, somebody or everybody in the Alliance is gonna do like one move and it's going to make that much difference, but it'll be enough to like sway something off course. Um, what that is, I'm not sure what that's going to be at all. But I also enjoyed the little Shikamaru Tenmari moment there where uh, she was observing that Shikamaru would make a really good Hokage. So I'm a fan of that coupling. I think they should go out. Returning to the main action of this chapter, we see the giant crater that has formed from the expansion and gyration of Obito's, you know, biju sphere thing. I keep being very vague with its description because Clearly these spheres are made up of the same material as a biju bomb, but their behavior is different. They can expand, yet then immediately contract. They can be sent forward, they can, can sit back. And as we see, uh, Obito emerge from the sphere that jettisons from the smoke of the crater. We see that he can literally like unwind it and take it apart. Um, and that's how we learn how Obito survived this particular explosion, is he actually enveloped himself in a sphere. And this of course speaks to how difficult it's going to be to land a blow on Obito. But this does not deter Team Minato. And Minato takes the initiative by saying they're going to have to create an opening and he's going to create an opening with insert very long jutsu title here. And of course, Minato's tendency to have very long-winded names for his jutsu amuses Tobirama to some extent, or at least he comments on it. But he agrees that he and Minato should create the opening because it's go that's a dangerous position to be in and they can sustain infinite damage. But of course, the young guns are not gonna sit around and just wait, and we see uh, Sasuke jump right out there with his Amaterasu and uh, Naruto right behind him to back him up. And as this straightforward attack is proven ineffective, we see Toriyama and Minato plan their strategy, which is to use what is called the instantaneous swapping flying thunder god technique, a long title that Minato can be proud of. And what this entails is Minato and Tobirama marking each other with their special flying, unique flying thunder god symbols. And while this is going on, we see that Sasuke and Naruto continue to charge Obito. But what they do is that they create a brand new combination move, wherein Naruto creates a Futon Rasen Shuriken, and Sasuke does a new move we haven't seen before. It's called the Enton Kagutsuchi, Kagutsuchi, uh, where basically he creates Amaterasu flames just outside of his hand and he seems to be able to manipulate the flames movements and what he does is he focuses the flames and matches the rotation of Naruto's Rasen Shuriken and they gyrate in sync and the flames overtake the uh, wind elements outside of Naruto's jutsu. So it becomes like a giant black flaming Rasen Shuriken. It's mighty impressive. And this is when the action starts to get a little complicated, so I'll try to break it down the best I can. As Sasuke and Naruto are charging Obito together, we see Tobirama suddenly appear behind Obito, who says, from the back as well, wink wink. <laughs> Man, my mind is in the gutter today. But as Tobirama appears, so too does Minato, but he appears directly in front 
of Naruto and Sasuke's attack. And this serves to distract Obito just long enough for me or for Tobirama to place his Flying Thunder God mark on his back. And as we remember, Tobirama and Minato are about to enact a jutsu that's called the switching jutsu, which means anything that Tobirama is touching he can switch that object with another object or person he has also marked. So this means he can exchange Obito and Minato's places like this. And that is exactly what happens. And kudos to Kishimoto for trying to make this scene less complicated through his page layout. If you look at page 15, we can see that it is the front, the top half of the page is exactly the same as the bottom half. They're like mirror image. If you were to fold them hot dog style, they would be mirror images. And this is just to emphasize that, you know, Minato and Tobi, or yes, Tobito, whatever you want to call them these days, have switched places. So instead of Naruto and Sasuke's combined jutsu hitting Minato, suddenly Obito finds himself getting hit with it, while Minato finds himself with strange glowing black orbs floating around him. So that's what happened. I hope I explained that in a way that makes sense. And as the Amaterasu flames begin to envelop uh, Obito's body in a nice exfoliating uh, feeling, I'm sure, we see Tobirama disappear, and we briefly get a little uh, Sakura screen time and Hinata screen time as uh, Sakura asks for confirmation of what the hell is going on over there. And to everyone's surprise, Sasuke and uh, Sa Naruto are smiling in triumph. Yay! Their jutsu seems to be, have been landed successfully. And that's how the chapter ends. But then we're left with the question of, oh come on guys. You really think that's going to stop Obito, Godbito, right now? Hardly. It's just Amaterasu flames, which we've seen a million times before, and a Futon Russian Shuriken, which we've seen quite a bit of too. Now, those jutsus, even though they've been combined, which is pretty cool, it's still kind of old news jutsu. It's going to take a new jutsu of some kind in order to defeat Obito. It's it's just sad that. Kishimoto even wants to lay on the hope that maybe this combined attack did anything. Um, and for that reason, I feel like this chapter was mostly fan service. Like, the action was pretty cool and it was fun to try to like puzzle out what exactly was going on <laughs> with that swapping, uh, you know, Thunder God swapping technique. But this chapter just kind of felt like action fluff. It was action fluff. We just got a little bit of Madara and Hashirama there, and then we got some explosions and a new combo move that's kind of cool, but the plot didn't really progress anywhere. Uh, we, we, we're not learning anything new necessarily. So for that reason, this chapter was just okay, in my opinion. Let me know what you guys thought of this chapter. Did you really like it, or was it a little fluffy for you as well? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, as far as predictions uh, for next week, obviously Obito is going to be fine. He's probably going to pull out some new ability that will erase the Matarasu off him, or his skin will peel off or something like the Juby did when it was on fire. Uh, that's what I think is going to happen there. Um, hopefully we'll get a little more uh, Hashirama and Madara battling it out. Though I don't think we're getting anything new from them either. Nothing new conversation-wise I don't think can happen and nothing new like battle-wise can happen. Unless Madara suddenly starts pulling out Renengan techniques, which would be pretty cool. But at this point I think uh, all the attention is on Obito. And the plot's gonna move forward when Obito moves forward in some manner. So those are my thoughts. Uh, again, let me know yours. Uh, below and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and I think that's it All right. Thanks guys. We'll see you next time. Bye